Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Jaikun, 10 man heroic in the Throne of Thunder. Hello. Yes, this fight is really, really quite cool. It's changed quite a lot um, from the normal mode. Like, you have to center on two groups now. It's kind of harder, but yeah, it's, it's, you get to fly still. And it's more complicated. And there's like more birds. But to be fair, it's one of the easier heroics. Yes, definitely. We did it third out of all of our heroics. Um, that's why you're getting this guide a bit earlier than the other one. So um, now if you haven't seen the normal mode guide to this fight, then please do check it out because we're not going to be going over all the normal mechanics. We're just going to say how you have to deal with everything on heroics. So if you don't know the normal mechanics of this fight, then just do click up on the screen now and that will take you over to the normal mode guide. Now for this encounter you want to bring two tanks, three healers and five DPS and any DPS that has high cleave. Um, on the platforms there's obviously the four eggs um, and occasionally there's a new add as well. So if you can do a lot of DPS on five targets then bring that sort of DPS, so elemental shamans mainly. Yeah, just stack elemental shamans. Yeah. If you have like eight then you know, whatever, just bring all of them. They, they will just might, explode. Might as well. Yeah. Now to start off we're going to talk about the main platform and really nothing much has changed. The quills do like a lot more damage and essentially if one target isn't healed throughout the whole of the quills that target is likely to die. Yeah. Um, so you do need to make sure that everyone receives healing when quills go on. The downdraft, um, it's exactly the same, just run against the boss. Um, a note for tanks, you should you should really spec so you have the, hit, the movement speed increase. Um, otherwise you're going to rely on things such as speed shields and stuff like that. So make sure you get your speed lights and all, your, all that sort of shit. There's still the core, which is like the AoE thing that he sends out, which you really, really need to move for. If you're hit by one of them just before a quills or something like that, you're going to stress your healers a lot. Generally, it's just a massive stress for the healers if you get hit by that. So do avoid that at all costs, really. Now the boss still does feed young, and normally this is something you need to worry about if you're flying around, but of course each time he does feed young, you do get a bunch of those green blobs that uh, land on the main platform, and of course they land near players, they either land on players or very, very close to where players were, and, and because the fight is so long, you really need to control where these are. If you just lay them anywhere, then people that are trying to go down to the platforms are going to be like, you're going to have to run through green stuff, or there won't be enough space in melee. Literally, we have one rogue, and that rogue nearly runs out of space towards the end of the fight i'm not even joking so even having one melee um makes it so there's not that much space in melee um so what you really need to do is that you just need to space them out a lot lot better so just make sure you're not standing near where the um the lower nests are because otherwise people can't jump down to them and just try not to stand in melee when feed young goes out and it'll just make everyone's life a lot lot easier now the boss will still do the dot on the tanks and um, this seems to hurt a lot more in heroic you notice it a lot lot more um, and really there's not too much you can do about it just make sure you use cooldowns when it is starting to hurt and the boss will still do his talent strike and really you should be taunting on two stacks of talent strike if you're taunting on three stacks the third one's going to hit really fucking hard and force you to use a very big cooldown and really you want to use that cooldown at a more convenient time so try and taunt around two stacks now the main heroic changes for this fight is really all to do with the people that are flying around in the air like um the, the feathers that you get from the nest now only give you three charges. The maximum charges that you can have is still four, but from each um, feather that you pick up, and um, you get three charges. And of course, you've got that one minute debuff making it so you can't pick up more than one feather every one minute. So that does really, really change how you have to rotate your players. Um, also, um, in certain nests, there will be nest guardians. These these are like new big birds that need to be tanked because they have a, um, a frontal swipe, um, which uh, is like a cone for 180 degrees, so no one can stand in front of it apart from the tanks because it hurts a lot. And if you don't engage it in melee combat, it will spam an ability called Screech, which does 150k damage and interrupts everyone. And it also casts it faster and faster and faster and faster. And it does have a substantial amount of health, like not a ridiculous amount, but enough health for you not to be able to just nuke it within the screech timers so now because you have these ne new nest guardians and you only do get three charges per feather you really do need to organize your groups and i say groups because now you're going to have two sets of people flying around you're going to in each uh, group you're going to have one healer and two dps and really it's quite regimental you need to go up into these certain places at these certain times because otherwise you won't have enough feathers and then they'll turn into juveniles and then they'll just absolutely destroy everyone so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to put up a table now i don't like using tables but we're going to have to use the table because I, I can't really explain it any other way you need to go in these places at these times otherwise you're going to get fucked so let's go through it so of course you have your group one your group two your tank one and tank number two now for the first nest that happens you're going to send group one 
and the first and tank number one down into that nest and group two and that second tank as well is just going to stay up and just do the fight normally now as soon as they can get back up um, tank one is going to taunt and tank two is going to go down with group two now at this point group one can use their feather in order to gain the feed young um, buff that you can get which increases your damage by 100% if you catch the blob and it's a lot easier now as well because they did change it up um, They did a hot fix it in order to make it a lot easier and it is a lot lot easier So just fly directly above the boss's head and you will get this buff which is really really nice Now as soon as um, nest 2 has been completed and group 2 and the, the second tank has gone um, back up Group 1 and Tank 1 will go down into the third nest. Group 2 can now use this time to gain their buff. And yeah, it's just nice because you can get extra damage. You don't necessarily need to do it, but why wouldn't you? It's a time where you can use an extra feather. Now, after Group 1 and Tank 1 has done that nest, you've got to make sure that you do get another feather at this point. So, because your one minute debuff would have run out by the time you've killed all of those ads. So, do make sure you do get another feather. And by the time you come back up, you should have three feather stacks. Now, when Nest 4 comes in, Group 2 and Tank 2 two will go up because there is a nest guardian there as well so um this is a uh, one of the up ones where you have to kill the eggs you got those two eggs at this point what we did we set one dps on each egg while the tank kind of cleaved off of it so we made sure we got the eggs down before we got down the nest guardian because if those eggs hatch not only do all your debuffs drop off of the juvenile so that you're like your dots don't tick over or anything they are a completely new mob even though they do have reduced health depending on how low you got the egg it's a massive pain because you can't really fly after them because at this point as group one you don't have any feathers left so you really really got to kill those eggs before they decide to fly off as juveniles and then kill the nest guardian at this point you want to jump down and every time you do come down from one of these upper platforms never use your flying thing ever there's absolutely no point always just jump straight down um you can also use things if you're really really unconfident at getting back especially from nest four which is quite hard to jump back from you can use things like um disengage or you can use slow for anything like that but you don't take any full damage either in this fight so that's something to know now with nest 5 all you need to do is send group 1 up uh, the two tanks can stay there. there is no nest guardian and there's no reason for your tanks to go up there because um dps on the boss is much more important than dps on those two little eggs up there so it, the two dps should be able to completely cover that as well as that extra healer helping Group 1 from that point want to go straight to nest number 6. They don't want to fly down, they want to fly straight to nest number 6. Um, normally at this point you'll normally get a quills or something like that, so you really want to heal up as well at this point. Um, and try not to fly while there is a quills going on because it really, really does hurt and you need to be healed up. So at this point, Group 1 will just go from nest 5 to nest 6. Now what you could say that is like after you've done nest 6, it kind of starts all over again. So you from at nest 7, Group 1 will go down and tank 2 will go down this is because of stacks so the tanks kind of switch at this point but group 1 will go down and tank 2 will go down nest 8 which is another down one uh, group 2 will go down and tank 1 will go down group 1 can use this time to get a buff now the next set of nests that come in you get the double nest you get um, a upper one and you get the lower one so both groups need to go this is another reason why you do need to have two groups because two nests do spawn at the same time so what you do you get group 1 to go down and you also get tank number 2 to go down this will just give him an extra feather um, and making it so he can go and help if he needs to help at any other point group two will then go up there isn't a nest guardian up there for this one so you can just kill it um so group two will just go up nest number 11 that comes in um group one which we've just um sorted out downstairs they will then fly to this upper nest now one thing to note is that you can't always fly directly from a lower nest to a higher nest it is very very unlikely that you actually be able to manage it so to be extra safe if you're very unconfident with this is that you should fly to the platform wait and then fly up to the nest this may mean that you do have a juvenile flying about but this does mean that you actually get to the nest which is much much more important now from nest number 11 group one that have just been there um, they will then move to nest number 12 however at nest number 12 there is a nest guardian so this is why you get um you'll get tank number one to go up there um he should have a feather from when he did nest number eight still available so he can just fly straight up to nest number 12 and um completely sort that out just by tanking that ad now at this point, you could argue like that you could just nuke the boss. The boss should be roughly looking about 25 to 30% health at this point. Um, so yeah, in theory, you could completely nuke it down. Also what you could do, you could just take the first two lower nests and just kill them like that as well. I, we personally did do this first nest that did spawn. It allowed the uh, 
group one DPS um, to get extra feathers so they could get the feed young from that point to give them like like I think it, at this point it'd be 120% damage buff um, so that is really really quite useful but you don't really need to you can just nuke the boss from this point and that's that's it really so it's long it, it really this whole fight it hasn't really changed that much except for these new nest guardians and of course you got the double one as well at the same time and really uh, once we worked out where people needed to be it isn't a huge dps requirement it's not a huge healing requirement it's it's really can we execute this it's yeah, a very it's, execute based yeah fight. it's all about the nurse get the nurse right and you'll be fine and you know making sure that you actually heal at the right times during the quills try not to leave the platforms too early so you know at least people get healing while quills are going on and stuff like that but generally it's not too hard also, there is a link in the description to a picture of this um, table system. So if you want to reference it, like have it on the other screen while you're doing the boss, that's fine. That's up there for you. And you can share it with your guild as well, just on ImageGare, which is good. So thanks for watching. This guide got you a kill. Please do drop us a like, and we will see you for our next guide. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching.